Hey guys, it's Eva from Bereva Creative, and today we're going to be talking about and attempting to make some Iron Gall ink. Iron Gall ink is a somewhat ancient ink. It's been around since the first century AD. Lots of old manuscripts and things were written in Iron Gall ink up until the mid-1800s, I believe. There's a lot of recipes for it, but um, the main ingredients are oak galls, which are little lumps that grow on oak trees. The other main ingredient, important ingredient, is iron. Um, in many cases, I, cases, iron sulfate is used. Today we are going to be extracting iron from things that are metal, uh, using acid, in this case vinegar. Historically, there's a ton of recipes. Some used different acids such as urine and whatnot to extract the iron. We are going to be simply using vinegar, thank goodness. You're extracting tannins from the iron gall and those tannins react with iron. And that is what makes the black of iron gall ink. Iron gall ink is a highly or somewhat acidic ink, it's acidic, and so it does have some corrosive properties. So there's actually ancient texts that are essentially dissolving themselves, and it's a problem. But historic people are preserving things well, and they've figured out a process to neutralize the acid. But that's not our concern right now. We just want to make some ink, don't we? There are simpler ways to do, do this, and there are definitely harder ways to do this. I found the recipe that I feel like I want to use. Some people use tea bags instead of oak galls because tea has a lot of tannin in it. Um, other things like coffee and wine also have tannins, so wine is occasional is sometimes used in this the recipes as well as an acid and as part of that tannin process to kind of add more tannins than even the oak galls. So besides the two ingredients, the iron and the tannins from the oak galls, you need a thickener or a binder. And that is simply to lend some viscosity to the ink and to make it flow better and adhere better to the paper. And for that, today we are going to be using gum arabic, which is something that's fairly easy to find at a craft store. I found mine at like an Asian grocery and not too hard to find and it's a very common binder for things like watercolor and other inks. So definitely findable at your local craft store. So let's get started. We're going to start this process by getting some rusty liquid together. So a lot of this junk we found with a magnet in our backyard. We grinded down a chunk of rebar and an old rusty chain that we had laying around and then we had the brilliant idea to add steel wool to the mix and I think it'll do quite well in this concoction. We're going to top this metal up with vinegar and let it sit for a few days to let it do its thing. If you're thinking of trying this, you definitely don't need to make as much as we did because we're also going to use this liquid for some eco printing in a future video. I think it's safe to say that we will never put flour in this jar again. Sorry jar, you have been demoted. While we let that stew, we're going to collect some galls. You might be wondering what a gall is. I sure am. Basically wasps lay eggs on the tree and when the larvae hatch, there's a chemical interaction between the eggs and the oak tree, causing the tree to grow these really weird round balls. The galls provide safe homes and nutrients for the larvae, but don't worry, all of these galls are completely abandoned. You can tell by the dark brown color and by holes where the wasps have chewed their way out. Generally, after winter is the best time to harvest them. So after Eva collected these, we found that we needed a lot more to get to the two ounces that we're looking for. So I channeled my inner monkey and climbed all over this tree. I definitely got some weird looks from our neighbors and I really can't blame them. I'm just glad none of it was on video because that would have been comedic gold at my own expense. Well, now we are going to pound these galls, wow, that sounds inappropriate, uh, into a fine powder. 
We are using a hammer and some wax paper to keep them from exploding everywhere. And you want to keep every little piece of these. Each one is filled with acidic tannins that will help turn the ink nice and dark. Doing this one by one is taking way too long, so instead we are going to pulverize them all at once. This worked pretty well, but we still want to get them finer. After all that crushing with a hammer, I ended up deciding that it would be better to really pulverize it in a blender. And I'm actually using a coffee grinder bit for this, so that is working perfectly to get this nice and fine. Oak galls are apparently very high in tannins, which are kind of a bittering element to things. There's a lot of tannins in things like wine and coffee and tea. These tannins are going to react with the iron from the iron solution that we made earlier, and that's what's going to create the pigment for our ink today. So I've got about two ounces of oak galls, and I'm going to be adding that to about two cups of water. After the fact, I think that you could use a little bit more water to the ratio, but that's what I'm using for this video, and it worked, so maybe just stick with that. <laughs> So you want to stir this really well, and it was actually kind of hard to stir in. It was a little bit um, hydrophobic, just because it's a powder and powders are weird like that. So I ended up stirring and stirring and stirring and decided that shaking would be easier. But however you choose to do that, just get that well combined and let it sit at room temperature for at least 24 hours to fully extract those tannins out of the powder and get them suspended nicely in the water. And now we are back to our really, really ugly iron and vinegar solution. So this has been sitting for longer than I expected. I think we let it sit for a full three weeks. Supposedly this is good after a couple of days, but maybe we have an extra dark iron solution here. We'll see. Ours was also very dirty. With all of the rusted metals that we used, it turned rather brown and that's fine, but also if you want a clearer solution, you can use just the iron wool or the steel wool and give that a little bit of a rinse off with like soapy water and then put that in the vinegar. And supposedly when you do it with clean um, iron donors, then you get a much clearer solution. But I'm totally okay with the brown look. It's going to be a slightly sepia tone to the ink, so that's fine with me, so we're just gonna proceed with this. You can see here I'm just cleaning out some of the solids and floaties out of that solution. It was really dirty and there were lots of bits and pieces floating, bits of rust and whatever these bubbles are uh, had floated to the top, so I'm just scooping those out with a sieve and now I'm going to be straining this through a coffee filter. And this took absolutely forever. I would recommend using a cotton rag or cloth, like a nice close weaved cotton cloth to do this so that you can squeeze it and kind of hurry the process along because the coffee filter took forever and I had to like gently rub it to try to dislodge all of the little bits that were plugging up the filter and eventually I did succeed. And now I am filtering out the tannin water solution that we made as well. I tried this also first with the coffee filter and I ended up switching to the cotton cloth because I was so fed up and it was so slow waiting for the coffee filter to slowly drip through. So you can see here, I'm just giving up on the coffee filter and switching back to the cotton. I was thinking of using the sieve again to help the cotton not fall through, but the cotton was stiff enough that with a rubber band, I was able to do it on its own and then I could pre-filter it and get out the big chunks with the sieve rather than the other way around. And 
And here is the benefit of cotton. You can squeeze this really hard to squeeze out all those juices and you don't have to worry about bursting through like you would with a coffee filter. And this actually really sped the process up, so I highly recommend the cotton rag for both this and the iron solution. But definitely use gloves for this whole process. Um, obviously vinegar from the iron solution is gonna be harsh on your hands and the tannin solution also becomes slightly acidic as you'll see later. So both of those, not great on your hands. They won't hurt too bad. It's not gonna, it's not like gonna burn your hands or anything. But as always, best practice is to wear gloves. And now has come the time to mix everything together. The third ingredient that we're gonna need here besides the iron and the tannin solution is gum arabic. You can buy this in liquid form at your local art store. I happened to find this powdered form that I wanted to try at a local um, sort of Middle Eastern grocery. Uh, apparently it's pretty easy to find and you can add it to foods. So I found it there and I decided to mix my own. Gum Arabic is water soluble, so I just added about a tablespoon to a quarter cup of water and I ended up increasing the amount of water because it did get a little bit lumpy and I struggled to get those lumps broken up so I added a tiny bit more water so it worked out to be at about a half a cup. You could also add the gum arabic straight into the vinegar solution rather than adding it to water and then you don't dilute the solution but I didn't think of that until after the fact so this is what we're doing here. The gum arabic will help with thickening this liquid so that it flows better in your pen so don't leave this part out. This is the fun part, the magic happens here. So I'm starting with a half a cup of the iron solution and I'm gonna add a half a cup of the tannic acid. So equal parts and look how fast this turns black. Literally instantly. It's so awesome, look how black that is. So the immediate reaction is instant as you just saw, but it does continue to darken over the next several weeks and on it essentially darkens forever it continues to darken on the paper later it's it's a whole thing but it turns so black instantly it's almost purple black here it's so amazing and then i added that gum arabic solution and you can see how it diluted i added about an equal part of water back to the solution so would not recommend doing that just add the gum arabic as a powder and that'll be better but here I am trying and to see how it writes and I started with less of the gum arabic and I ended up adding all of it and scraping in the clumps and I figured they'd dissolve over time because I wanted a slightly thicker solution to work with this pen. So iron gall ink is slightly corrosive, actually more than slightly, it is half vinegar. So if you do decide to use a metal dip pen, definitely wash it immediately afterwards or else you will end up rusting your pen. This stuff drives pretty permanently. It will be so hard to clean and you could totally ruin a metal tip. That's why I'm using glass tips. That said, historically, this was of course used with metal tips and of course things like bamboo tips and goose quills and that sort of thing. So it totally works. Just be careful with your metal tips pen tips, make sure to wash them off immediately afterwards or else it could damage them. And of course, this is absolutely not an ink that you want to refill fountain pens with. It will ruin the tiny little passages in your fountain pens and the tips and everything, just don't do that. And there's like little bits in it. There's, it's not the, the clearest solution. Like there's little chunks of iron and the tannins in there because there's no way to filter all of that out at home. So just don't use it on a fountain pen, obviously. Here I'm just showing off my fancy new glass pens. I just got these this week for this project and I absolutely love them. They were so cheap online. I'm so glad I got them. They're super cool. So I'm just dipping this to show y'all how well it writes and it's pretty smooth. I love the ink. I think I might experiment with the recipe a bit and maybe add a tiny bit more of the 
Arabic, gum Arabic to it because it is rather runny and it kind of runs out of the pen fairly fast. Um, I think a little bit more viscosity would help make this write a bit smoother and make it last a bit longer on the pen. But it does work fairly well and I absolutely love how black this is and it was such a fun experimental process. And it writes fairly well. You can get a couple words in before having to re-dip, which is perfect and pretty standard for dip pens. So now, just as an experiment, I wanted to test the acidity of these solutions, the iron, the tannin, and the combined ink. And I've got some litmus strips here. Unfortunately, the liquids are pigmented themselves, so it wasn't really a great read on how acidic these are but um, they all kind of worked out to be about a 3 or 4 pH, which is about as acidic as tomato juice. So it's nothing super dangerous, it is fairly acidic, and this is why it actually damages paper and why you want to keep it away from photographs. So thank you so, so, so much for watching. This was such a fun video to produce, and I absolutely loved doing this sort of thing. So let me know in the comments what you think, Totally tell us if you try this, tag us in any photos, videos, of course, like and subscribe and follow us for more. Bye!